Hello again, this is Ty Warner with Kissoft USA. Today I want to talk about sizing a planetary gear set. In this case we're going to look at a precision mechanics um, sizing. When you open Kissoft and you uh, click on this planetary gear icon here, it brings you into the uh, planetary gear module. Additionally, down in the, in the examples, if you open up the cylindrical gear um, heading, you can find uh, different planetary gear sets as examples. And specifically, what we're going to go over is this um, tutorial 12, sizing of a planetary gear set. So here's our gear set. And we have some information in here that we're going to use. We're gonna, of course, we've got to start the software. Um, open the planetary gear calculation module. I've already showed you that. We're going to set some basic settings. We're going to do some constraints. We're going to define materials. Uh, the, we're going to define the calcu calculation method and ratings. And we're also going to specify some additional factors. And then we're going to rough size. And uh, this will be part one is rough sizing this particular planetary. And part two will cover fine sizing and um, We'll see if that's enough time. Possibly part three would be optimizing the tooth form. So part one, we're going to go all the way up to 2.5 and rough size into this example. So let's start by looking at what our uh, inputs are. Our task is to design this planetary gear set with a 450 newton millimeter input torque at 10,000 RPMs. Uh, the nominal transmission ratio we're given, the required service life we're given, and application factor we're giving. The package size, the outer diameter of the gear rim is 35 millimeters. This is including a 3 millimeter material between the root diameter and the outer diameter. So uh, know that 35 millimeters minus 6 means you've got 29 millimeters uh, would be your theoretical root diameter of your uh, internal gear, your ring gear. This is going to be centered powdered metal. We're looking at a 0.5 millimeter or greater module. And the tooth form, we're going to optimize that. And we're not going to, we can do that because they're not being, uh, we're not using a hobbing process. So, and we're going to use a 2101-D04 AGMA standard for, for the calculation. So, we can go ahead and get started on this. Um, first thing we're going to do is open our our uh, module specific settings and we're going to click this allow large profile shift and we want to make sure we don't abort when we're getting geometry errors. And I don't know that we'll get geometry errors but in our sizing we may uh, and we want to see as many uh, solutions as possible on the rough sizing. So the next thing we do of course is we've now uh, modified our basic settings and we want to talk about our setting constraints. So it's already got a three plans, but you could change this to four or five. We're going to start with three. And then we're going to enter our materials. And we've already said we wanted a, a centered metal um, material on this. So what we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and find our centered metals in the material database by clicking this plus button down here. And we're going to grab this first centered D39 for all three. We're going to leave the uh, oil lubrication the same. Uh, it's going to be oil bath lubrication. And we're going to leave this lubricant temperature the same as well. The next thing we need to do is we need to define the calculation method and ratings. So in order to do this, we go to our rating tab and we go ahead and change this calculation method to the 2101-D04 metric edition. Okay? Um, in this particular example, the driving gear is not the, the sun. In fact, the driving gear is the plant carrier or the internal gear. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a couple things here. We're going to click this up to kilowatts because we've been given the, the torque. 
And it's easy if you hover over one of these units, you can right click and then you can change the units right here. Since we're in millinewton meters, we're going to go ahead and put 450 here. We're going to go ahead and modify the speed to 10,000 RPM. The overload factor, this K factor, the application factor is already at 1.25. We're not going to consider the load spectra. One of the things we should consider is adjusting our details of the strength calculation. And we want to make sure that we go ahead and um, put our application for, for force at the high point single tooth contact location. And then because we're doing an AGMA calculation and it's an internal ring gear, we're going to go ahead and do a, um, a graphical method for all gears for the tooth form factor of Y. Okay. So now we've set our uh, initial rating information and our data. So we've, we've uh, defined our ratings. We're going to go to our factors tab right here. And we want to look at our load distribution coefficient. And this is a distribution of power when numerous meshings are involved. We're going to go ahead and leave this at 1. We're not going to change alternating bending factor or the face load factor at this time. Okay. So now we're ready to start the uh, rough sizing and put some additional details in here. And it's really, it's really pretty easy. Um, we're starting out here at 1, but since we're going to have um, a little bit larger module than 0.5, we're going to we're going to go open our rough sizing right up here, and we're going to make a couple adjustments. Um, we're going to change this number of teeth on the sun from 9 to 14, and this is going to force KISS off to select a larger module. Um, if you were, were 11 or 12, you might be at that 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you know, 24 teeth. It's going to basically force the program to find the largest, so or the smallest module. It's not normally necessary to change the default value in the number of teeth. What we do now is we define our ratio, 4.25. This is our ratio plus or minus percentage, which is 5. And once we've done this, we can go ahead and calculate this. We're going to get a couple warnings. And in the example, the warning is a little bit different. For this material, I'm not sure why it's saying laminated fabric um, because we didn't choose that. We've actually chosen the, the, DIN, the DIN 39 centered material. So just go ahead and say OK for these three materials. And the program is going to go ahead and you should get a progress of calculation there, the gear sizing. It's impossible to follow the desired interval for the number of teeth of the pinion. That's okay. Well, that just means we don't get nine teeth. Or do we get nine teeth? No. Our pinion is up in this range here. So. Now, we can find one of our solutions. This is a rough sizing solution, okay? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to find this 8550. The face width of the sun gear is going to be 4.063, 3.8 on the planets, and 4063 on the internal gear with a module of 0.6. And then our tooth count is going to be 14, 13, and a 43 tooth ring gear. If we go ahead and accept this, it automatically populates, and you can see our geometry over here on the side is updated. Uh, as long as the rough sizing function is open, I can pick any one of these other uh, solutions in here, and it'll automatically populate. Once I close this, this is my answer at this point. So. One of the things that we know, we're in a precision mechanic, so we're going to have to adjust a couple things, and that's going to be our tolerances. If you look here, we even said that we're going to be in uh, precision engineering standard gears for a module less than 3 millimeters. We're going to go ahead and look at this, uh, um, this PM as a type of injection molding. It's not really injection molding, but 
In terms of the uh, quality and what they can hold, it would be similar to an uh, injection milled type of process. So we're going to change our tooth thickness tolerance to 10E for each of these. And that's a DIN 58405. Ten E. We're going to look at the same thing on our planet gears. And our internal ring gear. Now we've changed this to ten E here. The other thing we need to do is go back and change our quality class to a ten. Okay. And now when we solve this, oh, it tells us our, our low-grade gears with high pitch deviation, the application force at tip is required. And it says, do you want to change this in the dialog to find details of strength? We could say no, or we say yes. It says we have an undercut. But that's all right. Uh, there's an undercut on the other one as well. It's telling us that mounting in the radial direction is not possible at the assembly. What this means is you have to slide the gears in axially. It doesn't mean you can't assemble them. It just means you have to slide them in actually. So now if I go to my rating, remember on the details, we initially had at the high point single tooth contact, but because of this, uh, the program is telling us that maybe you want to do this application force at tip. So that's what we did. And now we have a, uh, a rough sized gear set. And it's going to be in our basic data, we can we can see if we have a face width of uh, 4.063, 3.8, and 4.0630. And our, sa our safety factors down here in our results. I could zoom into that, but we have our contact ratios, and we have um, our actual tip circles for plants. Notice in the tutorial, if you're following along in that respect. Um, I think we get cut off on one of those on the results page. It just shows the sun and the planets. Uh, but if you were to open that window a little bit further, I think that's on page 9 of 17, you'd get this the resulting information here. Um, and he's actually, in the tutorial, we've actually made a, a little bit of a modification here to 3.6 all the way across. So we can do this as well. And um, you can see how it adjusts our root safety. Um, it's interesting to me that these are a little bit different than the tutorial, uh, but that might be because there's something a little bit different in the um, in the way it calculated the the, the rough sizing. So. It could be that we've got a different profile shift somewhere, or maybe our center different center distance tolerances are off as well. But this is rough sizing. You can see how quickly you can get a, a, a fairly good idea of what the uh, geared paired can be, the, the module size, the center distance. And if we look at the geometry, we can look at the entire system. And if we do that, program calculates this and here's your planetary gear set and if you like watching things spin around you can hold that and it'll spin see that pretty nice so rough sizing a planetary gear set right here pretty simple uh, with Kissoft the next things we're gonna have to look at is probably the the um, the OD of this ring gear the root diameter and that sort of thing and we're going to look look at that kind of stuff in, in fine sizing or part two of this sizing a planetary gear set. So if you have questions, go ahead, email them in, ty.warner at kissoft.com. Uh, you can also reply to this video. Um, I check those quite often and try and uh, answer back as, as best I can. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, this quick this quick little tutorial on how to size a rough size a planetary gear set. If you have questions, you can go ahead to our website, kissoff.com, kissoff USA, and um, there's lots of information there for you to look at.
uh, you can get a hold of us and we can uh, absolutely support you in your gearing design requirements. Thanks again for watching.